or another delicious Dutch oven roast. So we're gonna stuff a tri-tip today and we're gonna put it in the Dutch oven and cook it outside. And the nice thing about tri-tip is that marbling that goes all the way through, it doesn't matter whether you have it rare or well done, it's delicious. And so we're gonna stuff it, but I need to cook my stuffing. Um, we've got some seasoned uh, stuffing cubes. I've got uh, some beef stock. This is better than bouillon beef stock. And then I also added a teaspoon of kitchen bouquet for added flavor and color. Doesn't really matter. Um, I've got cubed up pancetta. I've got fresh garlic, and this is really an amount that you want, and you can leave out any one ingredient um, if you don't want to do this. I've got a celery diced up fine, a red onion, and that could take any kind of onion, but that's what I had already um, out of the garden. I'd already started on it, so I wanted to use it. I've got sweet bell peppers, and these are the little baby buns. I've got orange and red. Fresh parsley, Parmesan cheese, fresh. Um, we're going to use uh, Italian seasoning, salt and pepper. And in my pan to cook this, I'm going to start off with a little bit of olive oil and a knob of butter. And we may or may not use all the fat, depending on how much fat the pancetta releases out of this. I am excited. So let's get this on the stove. I'll bring you over close and I'll show you. And then I'll show you when uh, we're stuffing the tri-tip because I've laid it open just like a book. Pretty easy to do. You just have to be slow, go slow, and you'll see. And then pound it out a little bit if you want. All right, let's do it. Oh yeah, don't forget, if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up and share it on your Facebook page. And if you're not a subscriber, you need to subscribe right now. Hit that button and go up in the iCard above and check out all the other Dutch Heaven videos I've done for you. And guys, go down in the links below and check out some cast iron. We're cooking inside and out on cast iron. All right, let's okay, do it. <laughs> so we've got our pancetta that we're gonna come down here. And pancetta is, it's like bacon. It's, um, it's not smoked though, so you're not adding a smoky flavor, although you could certainly add bacon. And there's a lot of garlic that's going down in this. And you're just gonna cook these on a medium heat, medium to medium high. You don't need to fry them. We're just sauteing them until we've sweat the vegetables enough to become fully cooked and soft. And I'm gonna reserve half of my parsley to um, be fresh when I stuff it. I also forgot, because I haven't brought it out yet, um, I'm going to add spinach to this mixture, fresh spinach uncooked. So we're getting some veggies in here. Okay, as soon as this is ready, we'll let it cool down so we can stuff our tri-tip. I'm excited. Okay, it is time to stuff our tri-tip. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, so I'm going to, I've got this parchment down because I am going to put this in the Dutch oven on parchment. It'll make for easy cleanup. There we go. And we don't need it. So see how nice and flat that is? And it's, you know, in some spots, it's a little about that thick. <laughs> it's not quite a half an inch thick, but it's not, it's a little over a quarter of an inch. So we've got that down. Our stuffing has cooled enough to spread down on here. And you want to make sure, uh, oh, and I do want to tell you, I did not season with salt because once I tasted the stuffing, and you should always taste, um, the better than bouillon and the kitchen bouquet were plenty of salt. And then you've got a little bit of salt in that pancetta. We're going to have salt in the cheese. I don't want to over salt it. So just spread this out. And I only used a cup of the better than bouillon. So that was good. Um, and the moisture from, and I did um, drain off a little bit of the fat too, so there might have been a tablespoon of fat in here. You don't need too much. The meat's going to render its own. And that's a perfect amount for this particular tri tip. All tri tips may vary in size. So let's okay, so we've got that down. Now I want to put down my the rest of my fresh parsley. 
and it just brightens the flavor up to have it fresh in there as well. You could even put fresh basil if you, if you like basil with um, beef. I tend to like parsley, but you know, I do like basil though. D trust me when I tell you, I, I can do either one. And then a huge amount of fresh grated, and I shredded it on the big shred uh, side of my shredder, because I started out, as you can see, in a little fine shred, and it just wasn't happening for me. And this roast is gonna be enough to feed six to eight people because you're gonna slice medallions off of it. So you're stretching what might only feed four under other circumstances. You're stretching it and you've got a complete meal. We are gonna have this with a salad um, and a really delicious potato that we'll keep secret for right now. And fresh spinach. The spinach will wilt down in the cooking process. Um, it'll continue to add moisture to your dish too. And I just rinse this so it's not completely dry, but we're good. Okay, now let's see if we can roll it. <laughs> and it, literally, you're just gonna roll. Try not to squeeze too hard because you want your filling to stay in there. Just like when you uh, wind it up. There we go. We have a rolled roast. Now, now we get to tie it. Get this. There we go. Pull any excess that's sticking out there that won't behave. Stuff any excess and let's get to tying this. And what you can do while you're waiting to tie it is grab a couple of toothpicks here and tuck and you know get it in place so you can tie it. Whoa, I'm just throwing them at myself. Okay, so that should hold our roast together good enough. Mm, super excited. Oh, okay. Now I've got my um, butcher twine. And again, you don't want to tie this too tight or your filling will escape you during the cooking process because, why am I tying a bow? Um, so I lost my battery. Anyway, we are tying this roast off. <clears throat> Don't tie it too tight. You'll get, uh, your filling will come out the edges. And then we're gonna go around. Oh, underneath. We are gonna cut these strings. Take your toothpicks back out. If you feel like you wanna truss it this way, you can. I might go ahead and do that just to keep that tied in and keep the roast more compact. But for the most part, this roast is going out. It's tied, it's trussed, and we're ready to get it in the uh, Dutch oven. And I'm gonna leave everything that's in here uh, except for the toothpicks involved. So let's go get some coal started and uh, whew, it's gonna be delicious. All right, guys, I'll be back. Okay, guys, so as you can see, we're ready. I've got my Dutch oven, and this is my 12-inch eight-quart. We're gonna use the trivet. You gotta turn it right side. This gives a little buffer between the meat and the bottom. Take your parchment. You don't have to cut it, just fold it in there. You got your roast that's been sitting to keep it at, or to get it up to room temperature as much as possible. And we're gonna stack tonight, which I'm using some hardwood charcoal. Um, and it's a little harder to uh, cook with because of the size and shape. So um, any of those of you that are using that, look at it. Oh, we're gonna bake a potato. Okay, so I'm gonna get this on and I've got all my coals are ready. So let me move you and I'll show you. Okay, that. so we're gonna bring over our lid and I'm gonna let some of that steam out. So I'm lining up the um, arrow with the lid and then add the rest of your charcoal 
remember we want more on top now I've got two big hunks of lump charcoal over here and uh, wood hardwood charcoal over there and use start a fire in your chimney <laughs> and you can use the charcoal once it's become charcoal so I want to grab some of these because remember we want more on top than underneath so I'm grabbing what I left underneath to put it on top and we're gonna put our potatoes on right now it's gonna be fantastic and then we need to put, and I'm putting the potatoes off to the side so they're over charcoal. That makes sense. And then we're going to put some charcoal on top of the potatoes and we are going to be good to go. And we can use odd pieces on this because it's on top. Okay guys, we'll bring you back when there's something else to see. Oh yeah, you want to see that, huh? <laughs> I'll get it all situated and we'll get to cooking. We want this one hot, 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 so that's why it's got more underneath. Um, baked potato usually is at 450 in the oven, so we're going to get that one hot. And uh, the bottom one, I'd like to achieve a temperature of 375 to 400. We're going to come out and check it in about 15 minutes when it's come up to speed. So guys, I wanted to let you know that I went ahead and started, uh, or actually let some more coals go further. and the lump hardwood and so I've got now I've got it surrounding the bottom of the Dutch oven down here I've got the lid is full and the lid on top of my potatoes I can hear or the potato I can hear my potato sizzling right now and this is for a future recipe so it'll be finished up okay as you can see we're losing daylight and I've taken my baked potato off. It is done, tender all the way through. And I haven't timed this. People, I just, you know what? Keep checking it. That's the fun about this Dutch oven cooking. Um, it depends on how many coals. This is at 160 right now. And that's in, there's 140. So we're gonna have some more, uh, medium rare to medium I don't want to cook it any further we're gonna bring it in oh my gosh and the smell out here is unbelievable <laughs> let's go in the house and let this rest okay guys so our roast has had a chance to rest and I cut the strings so we can get rid of those and it that just holds this roast together it's perfect get these out of here so you can cut and I'm excited oh my gosh okay so some of the cheese came out one well both ends but I'm not worried about that um, we're gonna go ahead and do use a sharp knife to go ahead and cut through this and get a cross section mm, oh look at that Woo. Oh my goodness, you guys, check that out. Now that's a beautiful thing. We're gonna go ahead and get this sliced up. And look at that, it's beautiful. It's about a medium, it's not a medium rare. And maybe in the center it might be, but I'm I'm suspecting, and that's exactly what I wanted because tri-tip is so flavorful. You don't need anything more than. Okay, guys, here's our end result, and we've got beautiful slices. And like I said, this roast would easily serve eight to ten people, um, depending on what kind of sides. We're just having it with a really low-carb salad. <laughs> And I'm gonna take a little bite over here, and I usually like my tri-tip pretty um, rare to medium rare, and this is a medium, but I knew that going in. It's okay because I wanted some variation. Like right here, it gets a little pinker. It's gonna be, oh, that's not a YouTube bite. Let's take a YouTube bite. Got a little bit of the stuffing. Mm-hmm, yum. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh.
absolutely delicious. The cheese is throughout this and the stuffing, it's so much fun. This is definitely holiday dish quality. You guys, if you were thinking about something different to do for the holidays, go ahead and cook something in your Dutch oven and impress your family and friends. All right, guys, I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe or another Dutch oven cook. Oh, you never know what I might be doing. So go ahead and leave me a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!